Hello viewers and welcome to Emeka Williams Spiritual Tips. I am Pastor Emeka Williams and if this is your first time of coming in this in contact with this particular feast, welcome to our family channel. Today we are going to be talking on a topic I titled Power and Mysteries of the Altars. Yes, when you understand the power of an altar and the mysteries behind an altar and the efficacy and the advantages of an altar, you will take altars seriously. Today, if you have not been taking altars seriously after this particular uh, 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 spiritual tips and this sharing today, this teaching, you will wake up and know that you need an altar. If you don't have an altar, you need an altar because altar is a very important thing in the life of everybody that is living. You might have an altar, but if your altar has gone weak, then there is trouble. What is an altar? Hold on, I am coming back to that. Relax. Don't touch that dial. Now let me go back to welcome properly my first time channel visitors. If this is your first time of seeing this face one more time, I say welcome with a thumb up and uh, God bless you indeed. Whatever it is that you expect from God this year, before the year runs out, I prophesy the power of the Most High God shall release it unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, this channel is purely of spirituality. We teach ourselves, we learn of how to use natural materials to solve our problems by connecting to their spiritual energies, vibrations and frequencies, their spiritual properties to harness their spiritual benefits. So this channel is all about spirituality. Yes. And you have to become a bona fide member of this family. For on this channel, every family member is important. Every family member counts. You know? So how do you become a bona fide member of this family? By subscribing to my channel. And how do you subscribe? Don't worry. Look at the right hand side of this video down below. You will see a red subscribe button. Click on it. Bagam. Just a click. And put your notification bells to all. So that whenever a new video is uploaded by this your brother you will get notified instantly why do you need that so that you don't miss out from the streams of knowledge wisdom that is flowing from this channel by the grace of the almighty god to whom i return all glory testimonies are flowing in from every angle people are happy because god is blessing them through the knowledge they gain from here and you are the next in line for God's divine visitation in the name of Jesus Christ. So, and to my returning viewers, old subscribers and new subscribers, you guys are the double chiefs. Double thumbs up. Thank you for being there for me. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for blessing me. You are the best fans ever. My fans are the best. Those of you that have been Giving me all manner of gifts, money wise, oh, and other things. And you have been saying I shouldn't mention, I shouldn't mention, mm -mm, I will mention, oh, so that the people out there will know that I have great fans, that God is faithful. I love you all. Mm, thank you so much. May your expectations be granted unto you without hesitation by the Almighty God. In the name of of Jesus Christ and to God be all the glory.
we want to say again to God Almighty, thank you, Baba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' most powerful name, I have prayed. Yes. Powers by the altar. The power, the mystery, the, 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 the secret things you should know about an altar and so that you can activate your own altar. But before we proceed talking about this altar, what is an altar? What is your definition, definition of an altar? Now, by my own simple language, I will define an altar as a meeting place between the mortals and the immortal. I said, an altar is a meeting place between the mortals and the immortals. An altar is a place of communication between the mortals and the immortals. You can define an altar as also a place of sacrifice. An altar is a place of fellowship. An altar is a place of worship. An altar is a place of communication. An altar is also a place of decision. Mm -hmm. An altar is equally a place where verdicts are being passed. Like I said, an altar is also a place of sacrifices. Altar is a place where matters are settled in the presence of the immortal. Now, altar, before I proceed, I want us to go to the word of God and see what he has there about altar. Now, there are two kinds of altars. You have a positive altar and a negative altar, as long as I'm concerned. There is an evil altar. Why there is a, 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 the altar of righteousness. The altar of the wicked and the altar of God. But everybody that believes in what they believe and serve whatever they serve, always have an altar, a head place of communication with whatever they are serving. And the problem is many Christians, many people that call themselves children of God, they don't know the importance and the power of the altar that they belong to. Let me tell you, this life is a battleground. And if you don't have an altar, the people that has altars will continue to dominate over you. They will continue to overrule you. They will continue to uh, overshadow you. They will continue to oppress you because they have an altar where power is coming out from. An altar is a place of power. When you go to your altar, you, you, you communicate with the spirit you are working with and the spirit will come down, it will descend to that, at that place and you will relate and it will empower you and commission you. That is why I said that an altar is a place uh, of, of uh, a meeting place between the mortals and the immortals. You must also have a strong altar. If your altar is weak, you can't succeed. But if your altar is strong, there is always a backup. Now, I am speaking to those people now that believe in what I believe. Talking about the altar of God. The altar of God, you go there, you pray to God, and God communicates back. You take your offerings, you go to the altar of God, you, 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 you give your offerings, you give your sacrifices. But let me tell you, some of us do not even know the importance of that offering we are giving them. You are saying, I am connecting to the power that rules in this place. The supreme being 
that is on this altar, and as such, I am having a league with you by giving you my offerings. Give me your blessings. Numbers chapter 23 from verse 1 to 7. There was a man called Balak, a king of Moab. And when he saw the children of God, because of the, the grace that the Israelites carry, because of what he has had, the exploits they have been doing, how God has been with them, he became afraid and became jealous of them. And he decided to curse them in order to destroy them. He decided to place a curse on them. What was that curse targeted at? That they will not excel. That they will die. That they will not prosper. That they will not enlarge their curse as God has ordained for them. That they will not be able to overshadow him. But that is not the program of God for Israel. And what did he do? He went and hired a prophet called Balaam. He hired a prophet and he paid the prophet to come and curse Israel. I am prophesying to you, whosoever that is going to hire any spiritualist in order to do you harm, in order to destroy you and your family, as they go, they will not return alive. Whatever evil they plan, both them and their spiritualists, they will use their own head to carry it in the name of Jesus Christ. And when he invited Balaam and succeeded in bringing Balaam over, Balaam told him, before we can curse these people, we are going to raise an altar. Altar is a place of empowerment. He said, we are going to raise seven altars. And on each of the altars, we are going to kill two animals, a bullock and a ram. Or an ox. And on each of the set seven altars, they prepared and instituted seven altars to cause a set of people. Only one set of people. They killed 14 animals because each altar they killed two animals. They sacrificed 14 animals to raise seven altars in order to generate power. In order to generate strong energy to curse Israel. And you, a child of God, when they ask you to offer sacrifice, raise an altar, so a seed. You will begin to play wisdom. You will begin to play smart. And the, the pastors, uh, uh, they are the one eating the sacrifice. They are the one eating the money. Does God eat money? How can he say I should come and make a sacrifice? If you don't make it, you are not helping the pastor. If you make it, you are not helping the pastor. You are not helping the spiritualist. You are helping yourself. Because your sacrifice will, uh, it will enhance the, 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 the power, the ability of your prayers, of your requests before God. An unbeliever that wants to cause the children of God is offering sacrifice and using it to raise an altar to God in order to get permission from God to cause God's own people. And people are taking altar. See, it's only Christians that do not take their altar seriously. Every other religion, they take their altar seriously. They know the power behind their altars. I am giving you this eye opener today so that you can go and reactivate your altar. If your altar is powerful and strong, whenever you kneel down at that altar and pray, God will go into action. Whenever you are in line with your altar, whenever you call God, from that altar, he will answer you. You can institute an altar of prayer in your house. You can institute an altar of prayer in the fellowship center where you worship. But I can tell you also, the altar in your house, personal altar, can never be as strong as the altar in the church of God. 
That is true. And that is fact. Now, this man raised an altar with 14 animals, seven altars. He knew the power of altar. Now, after he has raised that altar, Balaam told him, he said, let me go onto the mountain to seek God, whether God will accept the sacrifice and give me permission to cause his own people. What a foolish prophet. God does not take bribe to cause his own people now. When you offer a sacrifice and on an altar, you are offering that sacrifice, asking God to receive your sacrifice and show you mercy. You are enhancing your prayer. You are backing your request with something tangible. David said, let it be far away from me that I will give something, anything that doesn't cost me something to God. And the Bible says in that uh, Numbers chapter 23 from verse 1 to 7 where we read it. Say, when Balaam climbed the mountain to go and seek the face of God to cause Israel, he said, Balak stood by his altars. He stood by his sacrifices. He used that sacrifice as an evidence. He used that sacrifice as a point of contact. Yes, I have offered something. So in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in return, I should get permission to cause these people. So you don't know. People go and offer evil sacrifices at evil altars in order to harm you. And when you don't have an altar defending you, when the powers from their own altars come against you, it will hit you and penetrate you. Please, this particular uh, teaching, this particular spiritual tips is for you to wake up. This one is not uh, something, uh, okay, I want to go add this one, add that one, I used to buff or used to this one. This one is another secret. Go and activate your altar. Now, how will you do this? Look for a church that is a living church. Get a tangible offering, a tangible offering. Pray with it and go before God. And tell God, God, I raise an altar for my family with this sacrifice. I raise an altar for my marriage with this sacrifice. I raise an altar for my children with this sacrifice. The altar of the Almighty God. I connect everything that is mine to the altar of the living God in heaven above. Then you drop that your sacrifice at that altar. Living sacrifice. You can do it in place of money. You can go and price an animal that is uh -uh, big enough. Since most places, most churches now will not want to kill an animal. Go and price it. Know the price. Then take the money in an envelope. Use it as a symbol of a living sacrifice. And go and institute a covenant with God at that altar. Somebody will say, a, a, a pastor, we don't do it here in this place. Here in our place here, we do it. And we even do on behalf of people too. So, however you are going to do it, just make sure there is an altar backing you up. If you don't want to raise an altar there, you, you have a, 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 a minister who you know that is genuine, who you know that is strong, then you can connect to the altar of that minister, to that church, and get your sacrifice to institute a link between you and that altar. Whenever prayers are made on that altar, you are being connected to that prayers. Powers of an altar. An altar can destroy. An altar can build. Decisions are made at the altars. In those days of our ancestors, in those days, my grandfather then, my grandfather used to be a very strong and powerful healer. They all had altars. Unbelievers. They had altars. They sacrificed to their altars, to their gods. To activate their gods and put them to motion. Let me tell you, sacrifices activate the almighty God. He puts God to motion. When you offer a sacrifice at an altar of the living God, you have moved God. You, in fact, you empower God to swing into action for your sake. 
So go and activate your altar. Go and institute an altar to the living God. So that your battle will be easier. When you are fighting this battle, this spiritual battle all alone by yourself, it is always hard. But when you get God involved, when you make a, a, a league with God, instituting an altar by a great sacrifice, sacrifice that will cost you something, that God will look at and will say, yes, this one is serious. This one means business. Then God's hand will be moved. I think in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 26, 24 down to 27, or thereabout, a king of Moab that was fighting with Israel, Israel were conquering him, but he went and took his own son and sacrificed him. And instantly the anger of God came upon Israel and the battle ended. And uh, a sacrifice on an altar makes your battle end faster. So may God help us. I believe I've been able to pass some few information across to those people that God has ordained to learn from this particular spiritual tips. And I'll be bringing this video to an end at this juncture. Till we meet again in my next video, don't forget to like my videos, share my videos, subscribe to my channel if you have not. And don't forget to write your comment at the comment section down below. I love you all. Stay well till we meet again in my next video.